This is another one of those plots that has been done quite a bit in shows where, oh, all these kids are getting taken off to juvenile hall for no reason. I mean, how realistic is that? Wait, wait, no, 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 tell somebody I'm here. An out of control child, a parent's worst nightmare. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. So glad to see you all once again. And if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. I hope you'll stick around because we've got a lot of great content talking about shows and movies that we grew up on in the 80s and 90s. So if this sounds like something you might enjoy, hop below, hit the like button, go ahead and hit subscribe because we've got a lot of content on its way. And right now we're working our way through a series talking about Batman Beyond. And today we're going to be reviewing the episode Last Resort, which originally aired on March 4th, 2000. See how important these little updates are. So there's a lot of high school elements to this this one and dealing with Juvenile Hall. And this is a story I feel like has popped up from time and time again that, that feels a little recycled. But it's got, got a neat angle to it and certainly gets Terry really involved in the middle of that. But we'll talk all about that right after our 60 second rundown of the episode. Complete synopsis of the episode in 60 seconds or less or more, but more that bomb's going to blow up. So see if I can get it. Terry is out on patrol and Max is catching him up on all the high school drama that's going on. And, and so that people don't know he's missing. And then he sees some kid getting arrested. He's like, oh, that's... That's Sean. That's weird. Why is he getting arrested? He, or that's that's so odd. And then they're back at school and they're seeing a bunch of kids are missing. And, and Chelsea is going, well, yeah, everybody's going to this school. And they, they see this preview for this, this school that's taking troubled teenagers and stuff. And so she sends a letter to the principal. And obviously that raises a red flag. So she gets hauled off to this place. And Terry's going, this is odd. I don't think so, this is right. So he's trying to figure out what's going on. And finally he decides to infiltrate the place dressed as Terry. Or I guess as, w without being dressed as Batman. He goes, goes in there and they're like oh she canceled this appointment oh that's weird and so he gets his recorder goes back in there and, and he's trying to uh, uh figure out what's going on she goes oh they keep us from sleeping they're brainwashing us and all this kind of stuff and and he goes oh that's no good and then the other kid that's there is like trying to start a fight with him and then they try to lock him in there and and then they create this riot to get everybody out and and eventually save the day wow Somebody's in a hurry. It was kind of comical to me that I keep talking about how these episodes just are high school drama. And it literally, in this one, starts off with Max updating Terry on all the high school drama. You're thinking of the other Eric. Oh man, there's two of them now? So it's funny to me because I'm like, boy, they just really... Uh, not 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 pulling any punches at this point for that. Without him, people would start wondering why you don't know what's going on at school anymore. But it does start off with some kind of cool action. You know, it, it jumps right into the story of what's going on. And I like that, that if we're going to tell a story, you only got 22 and a half minutes. Let's jump in there. Let's get it established really quick of what we're dealing with. And then... Uh, let the story develop and you got more times to hit on all these different beats. So that I appreciate about this episode. Thank you for telling me. Good night. Something that kind of bothered me about this episode, though, and I think in general I keep keep kind of falling into this, and maybe this is part of the issue with it being, you know, based in high school, is like, Sean had gray hair. What are you talking about? And just in general you know, looked older, looked like an adult. And then as the episode goes on, I'm like, several of them have gray hair. And I'm like, I don't know if that's just, it's just a design choice or, or what, but it, but it's hard when, especially when you're dealing with just like pencil line art animation, then I'm like, there's not a lot to distinguish these kids from adults. And it's, and for me, it seems like an easy thing to go, oh, their parents have gray hair. Boom. Oh, it's an older person. Or Bruce Wayne has white hair. Okay, boom. He's an older person. But to give the kids gray hair, I don't know if something got lost in in the coloring room and, and the marks were whatever. But it was like, to me, I think that, that that's kind of a recurring theme where I'm going, especially the stuff that Terry has to deal with and Max and all these adult problems that I'm going, I have to keep reminding myself, oh, they're in high school. This is high school. They're young. They're kids. And sometimes I just keep losing sight of that because of these little things that kind of get lost in the mix. I don't know, for me anyway. They wouldn't believe it. This is something else we talked about. But like these big problems keep happening to this school. And I get it. That's kind of the nature of the beast when, when you're telling a show centered around a high school or around a, a community or a city or whatever. 
there's there, just by the nature of it, things have to keep happening to this. I had the same issue with Smallville. Uh, was you know Clark Kent as a high school student is like these are huge things that are happening to this one high school and to this one group of of teenagers. I don't have time for this now. It's not like Dawson's Creek where it's like well that yeah there, there's all this kind of typical teenager stuff. No, these are like major things like these asteroids hittings and and all this stuff that keeps happening to this this one school. Let me see if I got all this. And I think that by the nature of it, it's like they cram so much in the first couple of seasons that then they get renewed and it's like, well, more stuff's going to have to happen. Eventually they did have to go to Metropolis, but same sort of thing is happening in this episode or in this show where there's a lot that has to happen. I think by making it kind of high school centric. Okay. I, I, I I'm, I'm okay with that, that objective. But then you end up with these issues like, well, now we need big problems to happen to the school for Terry to get involved and Batman to get involved. And... Uh, well, that's even worse, isn't it? I don't know. I don't want to say that it's not believable because, like, I get it. I understand why they need to do that. But I think taking breaks away from high school and having things happen at large at uh, out in the city and maybe tying that into his dual life being in high school... And having to maintain his studies and do these high school drama stuff. And sort of, honestly, it's kind of like the what they do with Spider-Man. Where it's like, he's just a regular teenager. Regular teenage problems. Regular school problems. Likes the girl. Can't get her. Uh, bullies. You know, all that kind of stuff in the high school. But then his other life is Spider-Man. Saving the city. Saving adults. Being, being the hero of the city. This one, I feel like. Batman Beyond just kind of tries to blend those, mush those together, and it just doesn't quite work for me. All right, everybody. Time for class. But all in all, it's a pretty good mystery. You know, these kids that are getting taken and into this juvenile hall and, and you know, this public-facing company that is putting out commercials saying, hey, send your troubled teenagers to us and we'll you know, uh, uh, rehabilitate them and, and a bunch of people falling for that and sending their kids off or getting kids getting sent off for the wrong reasons and all that is all very good. I, I, I really, that I can enjoy, that I can I can get behind and, and see some value to that. How do you mess that up? And and it's really, you know, there's a lot of build up to it, which kind of sets the stakes pretty high as a viewer to go, well, there better be a good payoff, better be a good reason why this is all happening. They're only making it worse. And where is the point that the police should be involved versus Batman getting involved? You know, I always think of like kind of the low level cr crimes being, oh, the police will handle this or like the, in this case, a public facing company that is like, Hey, police, can you go investigate this? We've got evidence that's saying that it's not what it says it's going... Something like that. This company's not what it says it is, so why don't you go look at this? And what do I say when they ask me where I got it? A little bat left it on my front porch? And should be regulated by some agency or something somewhere. Versus when is it like, oh, this is too big for the police or too extravagant for the police terry batman needs to go address this and 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 that that is kind of dealt with a little bit in in this as well that's when terry mcginnis swings in action but also what's up with sean why is he just being kind of a jerk you know everybody else in this this juvenile hall prison setting is like being brainwashed and being you know twisted and turned into different direct different you know mindsets and stuff and put in this isolation and then you got sean that's just kind of walk around being a jerk like why isn't he i that contrast was weird i don't know if they just had this interesting character that they wanted to work in there somehow or what the deal was but it was like what's what what's up what's he doing he started it and again i i don't i'm not a big fan of like pointing out inconsistencies or or plot holes and things like that because i I'm, I'm really a great viewer of cartoons that i'm just like right there watching it point by point and and kind of don't see through some of the little magician tricks that writers do to, oh, don't pay attention to that. Pay, pay attention to this. No, I was into it, really. One that was kind of glaringly obvious for me in this one is they took his bag. Terry goes into this place and they they took his bag. Oh, you can't take that in here, you know, and didn't search it. I mean, this isn't a very well-run company, so why wouldn't they, like, try to figure out what he's trying to to sneak in there? And they don't look through it. And if they did, they would have found the bat suit. 
So well done, Terry. You know, he couldn't he have like a, 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 a concealed pouch or something in his bag so that, that if somebody does look in his bag, like it's literally you just open it up and oh, bat suit. It's bad on both fronts. What's in there anyway? Your security blanket? I, I have to say, this episode was kind of problematic. There was a couple of questions there that weren't being answered. Like, namely, why was this place taking kids? What was their benefit? What were they getting out of that? And like I said, what, where's the agencies that kind of control this stuff? Like this private organization pops up and goes, hey, send us your kids. We'll take care of them. And are treating them horribly. Like, any kids that, that are going in there are turning into these zombies. I'm afraid I have to agree. Again, I didn't know what, what the deal with Sean was in this episode. We, we were just talking, that's all. And I felt like Batman wasn't really needed, believe it or not. It's like Terry was doing fine on his own, and, and even there's a line in there about like, oh. Some jobs are just too tough for Batman. And this could have been very much a Terry McGinnis episode, and not even needing Batman. And... Again, it's like they kind of forced Batman in there just to have him in there versus going, okay, well, I guess in that case, we don't need Batman. So let's just go with that. Whose idea was this? And then that little interaction with Bruce Wayne and Terry at the end. I don't know if that was the, the point of this episode to go, oh, man, hopefully someday we won't need, you know, places like this. But uh, just kind of an odd ending and, and just sort of tied up this episode and sort of a Sorry, boring way. I sure wish we didn't need him. I know. So when it comes time to rank this episode, uh, you know, it just didn't have a lot going for it, in my opinion. I, I, I feel like I'm being pretty hard on some of these episodes, but this is the point of the channel. I'm going back and watching these shows, you know, and I, I will hold my final opinions about Batman Beyond until the end of the series, but... There's been some really good episodes and some very entertaining ones. And, and, you know, and obviously by the nature of this, I got to like put it in this ranking list and, and, you know, pick and choose and that sort of thing. But, you know, the, the top half of this list is they're good episodes. I would watch them again. They're entertaining. They hold my interest. They, they have great plots. And then there's episodes like this that I just don't feel like capture my attention. And it feels like just, I, I feel like there's, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm only surmising, I'm only guessing, but it's like, boy, were they just struggling with their identity and trying to make the studio happy, but trying to make the show they wanted and kind of doing this weird mixture of the two? I don't know. But for all those reasons, this episode falls at the number 20 spot of my favorite episodes so far. It falls just below Ascension, I think because Ascension at least wrapped up the whole first season. It felt like we were, it was a very purposeful episode. There, there was a meaning behind needing that episode and, and a way that they accomplished that, which I appreciated. But I do have this one beating out Bloodsport because at the end of the day, Bloodsport was simply just, oh, here's a guy hunting Bruce Wayne Batman and runs into terry mcginnis batman and it just, the motive wasn't there it's like they had this kind of neat character that they had to force this backstory into and then you know then a face-off between batman and, and blood sport guy and the worst thing about that episode is john claude van damme wasn't in it at all you made your point so i mentioned this a little bit earlier in the episode but my question is what do you think is the distinction distinction what is that the distinction between when a mission or a, a crime or a villain deserves Batman's attention versus just the police taking care of it. And I know that's kind of the fun thing about Batman is like where the police stop and Batman begins. <laughs> Batman, anyway, you know, so that's kind of the fun element of that. But also in a situation like this, where it's like, well, this is kind of, it's kind of a level of criminal activity that really I feel like needs the police's attention especially when we kind of remove Batman from the equation. It's more Terry, another teenager, trying to infiltrate this place. Uh, that's my opinion. But anyway, I'm asking, where do you feel is the distinction between when a crime needs Batman versus just needs the police? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. If you want to see more episodes like this, just hit subscribe. And also, if you really like what I'm doing here on the channel, share it with somebody. I'm sure you know other people that enjoy Batman Beyond or at least want to hear somebody talk about it and open a conversation. Share this with them. By all means, it'll, it really, that tremendously helps me out. And I, I always appreciate when I see these shared other places. 
And I have new episodes coming out every week. And if you can't wait till then, I've got some older episodes over here you can take a look at. But we have next up the episode Armory. So you don't want to miss that. As always, I'm Andy Canode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.